Hello world, namaste. We are Signet. Hope everybody is doing great in this sunshine state. I'm Nimish Vora, and I build and manage client relationships as vice president in Signet. Interestingly, I have been uh, a quality advocate for 15 years myself, and uh, before getting into you know, uh, business development. And uh, what I believe is that uh, quality and keeping the higher standards of quality, it's, it's not just a skill, but it's an art. Um, it takes a lot of hard work and multidimensional thinking to achieve the greater standards of quality and achieve the quality objectives. Um, there was a time when quality was considered as uh, you know, solving a few defects for a successful release. But uh, in this time and age, the quality is essential uh, to, to run a successful business. So um, let's go back to Y2K, year 2000, when we started um, living in the dimension of internet, which uh, brought a lot of changes in, in, our, in the way we live. Um, and fast forward 2015, when <clears throat> um, we, we were introduced to have connected things, smart home, smart world, smart city, and, and certainly it brought um, a lot of changes in, in the way we live as well. And now we are also introduced uh, with this artificial intelligence, which, which is again apparently changing our lives a lot. And I'm pretty sure by 2030 we'll be living in the, another dimension, what we call artificial intelligence. So, I think that's how you know, we wanted to bring in today what we call is, is a paradigm shift in, in a predictive and connected quality engineering. Did you know that um, by 2028, you know, there will be 70% enterprises expected to adopt uh, natural language as a primary uh, programming language? So are you doing enough to harness the artificial intelligence? And do you have a unified tool for connected quality engineering across the heterogeneous applications? Because scaling automation across the applications, right, and, and life cycle, such as SAP testing solutions, can help achieve you know, up to 300% uh, ROI, and, and it could certainly help you to save millions of dollars. So let's take a look at it, that from does it work to how could it be more resilient and work better with a paradigm shift in predictive and connected quality engineering. I'll hand it over to my colleague Shivangi, and she'll take it from here. Thanks, Thank you, Nish. everyone. Hey, good morning, everyone. You had your coffee? Anyone remaining? Yeah. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, so I'm Shivangi, born and brought up as automation tester, <laughs> and of course, quality expert from heart. And like many of you, I have seen the paradigm shift since I started my career in 2008. So it's been 16 years, and I can clearly see the difference. Back those days, quality and testers, of course, they were treated as second-class citizen. I'm pretty sure many of you may be able to resonate that. In fact, yesterday also a couple of people visited our booth and they said, I'm just a tester, I'm just a QA. So I, I can connect with that, but not today, because today we are very important. That is, that's what the paradigm shift is talking about. Those days, we we were working like somebody who can check the box of quality. The development is done, now we have to do the testing. Just tick the box, but not today. What we are doing, we have become the functional as well as the holistic guardian of the product. And of course, those days back, you know, uh, it was completely IT focused. The testing was only IT focused, but today it is bringing it is impacting business as well. So of course, anything related with money is important. And that is, again, coming back to quality. 
right? There are, there are man, many factors or the drivers in the industry that is bringing this kind of paradigm shift. You may be aware, you, and many of you may, be, uh, may have adopted uh, these drivers, like adoption of uh, AI ML, right? Of course, these days it's a buzzword. Everybody is trying to evolve, including quality. AI ML not only in terms of testing tools or test automation, but across the quality value chain. Again, the application landscape is becoming more and more complex, and we expect that it should work seamlessly. The flow of data, the flow of functionality, the system talking to each other should be absolutely seamless. So this again calls for quality, and we again become important. Automation. So automation first approach. Now these days, we give right for first refusal to the machine, to the scripts, and all the automated data that we have created. So that's where automation first approach comes into picture, and that's, that's a great driving force you know, for this paradigm shift. With the increase in the, on the business impact from quality perspective, we are completely focused on customer experience. So if you have any mobile application, any e-commerce application, and you are not able to give the right experience to your customers, you're gone. If you open any website, any mobile application, you, you don't get the right experience within 15 seconds. What, is, what do you do? You call it a crap, and you, you, you don't go there again, right? So that's how you are, the, the business is, is getting losses, right? So again, the customer experience, the perfect and right customer experience comes into picture. With the adoption of Agile and DevOps, again, quality at speed. Earlier it used to be quality versus speed, where the worst sufferer used to be the testing team. Right? We, we used to get the smaller window, maybe of one week or something, and we were, we were forced to do the testing, which was, of course, not suffice. But these days, we are well equipped for quality at the rate of speed. Again, so that's where the, the concept of continuous testing, you all aware, is, is coming into picture. Continuous testing, where the testing is moving towards left as well as toward right. TCOE, which is the centralized testing body taking care of all sort of testing requirement, has now emerged to practice center of excellence. Now what's that? It's a federated group where you have your testers in the Scrum team, part of Agile teams, but there are certain experts who are well equipped with niche and new technology. They are part of the central body and they are helping the teams. And that's, where, that's how we are bringing in the innovation across the organization. So these are a couple of drivers. There can be uh, many more, and I'm, I would love to hear from all, all of you if you, have, uh, you if you have any other practice or any other driver that you see in your landscape, of course. So these are the drivers, uh, I would say, which are taking us from testing to quality engineering. But we know that this is important. The transformation and modernization of testing is very, very important. We understood the drivers as well. But why we are not able to go ahead with this journey? There are many organizations who are struggling to go ahead with this. According to a survey conducted by Forrester, they are mentioning that around 90% of the respondent, they agreed that testing transformation and modernization is very important. And this has capability of bringing in the business benefits also. Again, this is going back with the, the kind of experience the enterprises had. But what is stopping us? Why we are not going there? Following up with the, with the paradigm shift, what is, uh, what is the, the cause of, you know, what is the bottleneck, you can say? A couple of concerns that we have been hearing. Uh, yesterday also in, in our booth, we had very great conversation across multiple uh, people. You know, they, they shared their concerns also. And I, I collated all of them here. So, so many of them said that the current tooling that they have is not able to support across all the layers of the 
landscape. You have your uh, front office, you have your middle office, you have back office. So, so every layer is using different tools. Again, many tools, tool bringing lots of, uh, you know, maintenance, uh, again, again, a bottleneck, right? You, you need to optimize your tool cost, you need to optimize your strategy against the, the, the various tools that you use. They, they started off their automation journey, <coughs> excuse me, but uh, their current tool lacks the AIML capability. So that's again a concern, right? They said that I have invested, but my management is not able to you know, approve me budget so that I can get new, new uh, tools which has AIML capability, which is very true. Why will management spend on, on something which is not going to get business benefit for them, right? Again, few, few came up and they said that they lack strategic guidance. They have budget, they want to move ahead in this journey, but they don't have that kind of guidance which, which can help them take the journey forward, right? So these are a couple of concerns that we have been hearing. Now, what if you have access to a unified ecosystem where tool, talent and intelligence converge. Meaning, if you are struggling in your QA landscape, only tool or any only guidance will not help. Even only getting the right set of people will also not help. You need to have the right ecosystem to go ahead in this journey. And that's what we are talking about here. We will, we have, we have to make that ecosystem available across enterprises so that everybody should be part of this journey. Think of a scenario where there is an engine which is predicting the right set of test cases for you. Meaning, out of your, say, 1,000 test cases, which are the top test cases which are uh, most critical and you should definitely execute it or pick it for automation. Usually we do it with human in intuition, right? But what do we, uh, what if there is a, a platform or the tool or the utility doing it for you? Again, those test cases getting converted into automated script using Gen AI. You have the scripts, now your expert sits and improvises those scripts with his uh, intellect, right? So you have that human touch also in the loop. You execute those automated script, you collate the data. It can be a defect data, it can be an execution data. Again, you run the engine on top of it, the intelligence on top of it, and you are able to predict what kind of upcoming defects or what kind of uh, root causes you can expect, right? So that's a kind of loop where you have to put in the intelligence at every phase of the quality assurance value chain. Of course, along with human touch as well as empathy. Nowadays, uh, there are lots of discussions going on whether AIML will replace me as a tester also because people are going towards that. And that, that's kind of a, a fear amongst the, the whole fraternity, right? But that's not correct. According to me, it's complementing each other. Let's work together along with the, with the AI ML testers. You bring your empathy, your human touch, and, and come up with the great uh, ecosystem. So, so neither a tool, nor a person, nor any processes to, alone can bring in this kind of change, but we need a complete ecosystem that will uh, take us forward in this journey, right? Now here, our motto is to democratize this ecosystem, make it available to the entire uh, enterprises so that everybody should be part of this transformation. Of course, don't take my words. Come visit our booth and see all these things in action. We are in many of the uh, use cases. We have developed it, we have del delivered it, and we are seeing great benefit for our customers. So you have your front office where your web application is there, your mobile application, your e-commerce application, which is very important for the end customers. Of course, middleware where you can have your uh, microservices, your APIs, your payment gateway, 
and back office, of course, ERP systems like SAP Dynamics 365. And there is a single tool cutting across all these layer and providing you the automation. And again, an added layer of predictive and intellectual, uh, intellectual capabilities. So that's where our, as part of our objective of making it available across uh, all enterprises and democratizing it, we have Signet Smart Quality Hub. It's an amalgamation of platform, plugins, as well as professional expertise. We have certain platforms which will cut across all the layers of front office, back office, and middle office and provide you automation services. We have separate plugins, which has AI, ML, Gen AI capability. The use cases which I mentioned that can be augmented to provide additional intelligence on top of it. And of course, experts who are ready to provide you strategy till execution. And again, these ex experts are not the mere testers. They are domain experts with, of course, a strong foundation from quality perspective. So tool, as I talked about, we have testing with as a one-stop shop for all kind of web, mobile, API, and database automation, including desktop as well. Enterprise application, be it SAP, Dynamics 365, it is able to automate. And the philosophy with which it runs is no code and uh, record and playback, which again makes the life of the tester quite easy and make the test design quicker. We have uh, around 300 plus pre-built commands already written for all these uh, applications which I mentioned. Also, it has uh, uh, data validation capability which can automatically uh, validate the data. It can uh, clean the data, standardize the data, and make it ready for further consumption. So this is these platforms are at the core of Smart Quality Engineering Hub that I'm talking about. Now, what beyond platform? Of course, I talked about the platform. What, what else do you get here? Right, as I mentioned, uh, ecosystem. So platform cannot be the only part of ecosystem, right? So we have, we have innovation office. We believe in, in co-ideating, co-innovating, and co-creating. So our customer comes to us, they come up with some business challenge, we sit together, ideate, and come up with solution. <coughs> and of course, we build it together. So that's what the co-ideate, co-innovate, and co-create concept comes into picture. That's part of uh, uh, our ecosystem itself. Of course, AI ML plugins I talked about, there are multiple use cases, and it's a live uh, a platform where depending upon our prospects, our customers' requirement, we keep on adding the use cases. Consulting and advisory, of course, without a strategy, how will you execute it? So you need the right strategy. Again, I'll go back to my conversation with many folks yesterday. They said that, yes, I am very mature, I have been doing it for the last 15 years, but it is being done in silos. Meaning you, you have that expertise in your landscape, but you are not able to leverage that because of non-transparency, because of silos. So you need somebody expert who should come there, understand your landscape, understand the pain point, which every team is facing, right? And come up with some, some recommendations. Again, these recommendations will be backed by what industry is doing, what other enterprises are doing, and what we have already done for our customers. So that sort of recommendation will come, and uh, along with the plan, how to, to implement those recommendations, uh, we can provide you the consulting and advisory services as well. And continuous testing, of course, we have, to, we have the DevOps capability. It is not confining only to the quality engineering. You come to us, we can give you the end-to-end -end, uh, solution from continuous testing perspective as well. Now, wherever you are in your journey of uh, testing, automation, quality engineering, you may have started this journey till now you are doing it completely manually, and you are about to start it. So the first thing which, which, uh, which, which comes to the mind, and let's start with Selenium. Why Selenium? Right? Because it is open source, you don't have to invest, so let's start with Selenium. That's how it, it comes into mind. Of course, I am I'm a pro Selenium, so, so, so don't take me wrong. Uh, of course, I like Selenium. Uh, this was first of, one of the first open source tools where I started you know, uh, creating scripts, of course. So, so my love for Selenium will always be there. But I don't want to 
you know, confine myself only to a single tool. Let's explore it. Get the right option for your landscape. It can be Selenium, but you have to use Selenium smartly. You have to add that intelligence, that kind of capability in Selenium also, so that it, it is able to take care of all your testing requirements. So wherever you are in your testing journey, it is, uh, it, it's, you, you just want to start your automation journey, you are quite matured, maybe say 50, 60% already automated, you are using best of your test management tool, defect management tool, or you have implemented AI ML in your uh, uh, entire landscape, we are there to help you. We will be still be able to give a third person's perspective there, how you can do something different, which will add more value to you, right? So that's how our quality engineering approach is. Strategy till execution. We will prepare the strategy for you, and we will pro uh, give you the pathway or the way forward how to execute that. So uh, again, uh, you have been listening from me, but it may be just a talk, some gyan which I am giving, but that's not true. We have delivered it for our customers. Let's talk about this. This is, this is one of the largest building construction material uh, uh, customer. They have a very, very complex SAP ecosystem, which has SAP HANA, SAP ECC, as well as many homegrown solutions. And it was quite complex. And it became more complex because of multiple mergers and acquisitions and, and complex policy getting incorporated. And they came to us with this problem statement. They're having defects uh, in production. Uh, the releases were getting impacted because of lack of testing or very less time for testing. So we thought of, of helping them and uh, we, we gave them the idea that you should carve out your testing from your build and let's work on it. They had that faith on us and we started working. We created a small TCOE, again, it's a federated one. They had certain members doing testing, but we, we created a small group who set up the SOPs, the practices, the matrices for them. And once we, we understood that not only automation, but the entire process has to be put in place, we started off uh, our, our engagement. Again, as I mentioned, we set up everything for them, and then we started automation. We used our automation recommendation engine also to predict what are those top priority test cases which, which we are going to take for automation. So they had around 2,500 test cases. We cannot go big bang there because it, it, of course, requires lots of investment. So we use that engine, pick around 200 plus test cases, cutting across their uh, homegrown logistics management system, their SAP HANA and their SAP ECC, uh, which is a GUI system. And we were able to automate the entire ecosystem, the end-to-end -end test cases in a single uh, scenario. We were able to complete around 200 plus uh, test scripts till today. And with that data only, with that 200 test cases only, they are able to, uh, to reduce their testing cost by around 35% and uh, the, the production defect by around 25%. Of course, the test coverage till date with these 200 test cases is around 80%. So think of the, the, the smartness with which we, we work together along with the customer in this journey. There were around 2,500 test cases. We, we smartly picked around, say, 200 and, and went ahead, getting approaching around, say, 80% of the test coverage. So, so again, this is, this is from the SAP. Please do visit us. We have the working demo for this particular customer, how uh, the SAP system is talking to the logistics management system, which is a, a non-SAP system, and how will that work? We have that working demo ready. Please do visit our stall. This is again for one of the uh, UK-based credit solution provider. This is an amazing project again. They were undergoing uh, microservices, monolithic to microservices uh, transition, so they had requirement of testing the UI, the API, as well as databases across all the layers. Uh, functional as well as non-functional uh, testing uh, included here. We, we, we came forward, and not only testing, but again, the end-to-end -end process setup, end-to-end -end traceability, including 
RCA setup, root cause analysis setup in Injira also we, we did uh, for them. And these things were not coming from customer, but we proactively, our team analyzed it and understood that these are the requirements, these are the gaps which are there in the landscape and we should definitely work on it for a better uh, result. So that's how we worked here for this particular customer. And let me uh, uh, tell you that this, is, this was the finalist in European testing awards, this particular project. So with that, we got around 40% reduction in test execution and 50% reduction in the RCA discussion because the RCA setup was already there and developers were quite freed from you know, doing the same kind of RCA discussion in every triage. So again, a, a great project. So with the, these are a couple of recent success stories, but we have been delivering in this model for a long time. We have a history of around 23 years. Of course, with time we have evolved and uh, we have started adopting the paradigm shift and that's where we are able to provide the value-based outcomes. It can be improved in productivity, improved in customer experience, reduction in defects, across various projects on different numbers, but of course the numbers that you see is, is it on an average, well, that's what uh, we, we are able to uh, deliver. So are you guys ready for, to embrace the future of quality engineering? Uh, from my side, of course, let's start and elevate your testing standard with Smart Quality Engineering Hub. Again, it's not a tool, but it's an ecosystem that we are providing you along with tool people, intellect, with that human empathy and human in loop and touch. With that note, uh, I'll, I'll take a pause here and any questions from your side will be highly appreciated. Yes. I'm, I'm sorry, one more time. Okay. okay, so the yeah, question. Yeah, I got that. So, okay. so Chris no, has a question. Yeah. Uh, how do we maintain the scripts generated through AI, right? Yeah, so the scripts generated through Gen AI, the, fir the first level is once you get the scripts from Gen AI engine, you have to refactor it to make it compatible to, for your system. This is first part of it, right? Now your script is ready, you can keep on executing it. Uh, as and when required. Depending upon the capability, there is a concept of self-healing. You can incorporate that. Again, it depends on the kind of tool that you are using. And self-healing plays a vital role in maintainability. So you can, uh, the easiest way with which this particular tool, testing with which I'm talking about does it, it captures all the <coughs> objects, right? And if there is a deviation up to say, uh, non-deviation, I, I would say, up to say 40%, it will be able to recognize that object and uh, keep on going, right? And uh, for maintenance, again, it's, you have to go to that particular, it's a low-code uh, uh, platform, you have to go to that particular step. Maybe some addition, some deletion of functionality or objects is kind of a, a, a button away. So that's how we uh, go ahead with the maintainability. Thank you. Any more questions from the audience? Okay. All right, then thank you everyone for listening us and we look forward to see you at booth number five and six. We have some interesting demos going on. We look forward for some interesting conversations and there will be a few gift hampers as well for giveaway. Please stop by. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thanks for your time, everyone.